Hello and welcome to Cloud Force Vibes. My name is Bobby and this is how I grow orchids and carnivorous plants. vibes. So today we're going to be working with some plants in my orchidarium here. I'm going to show you how I water these guys. It is time. A lot of these mounts are getting dry to the point of where I would water them and I'd like to show you guys how I do it. I'm also going to throw in a little bit of feed tips and information, at least how I do it, because a lot of people ask me and it's really, really a subject that uh, I don't like talking about a lot, but I feel like sharing some information will help you guys because there really isn't a lot of information out there on taking care of some of these kind of plants. So I'll do the best I can to give you some tips and tricks on how I do it in my environment and in this orchidarium and um, hopefully that can help you guys make your decision. So looking through here you're going to notice that a lot of these plants are a little bit dry. We'll take a closer look at this one. This is my Dendrobium Cuthbertsonii Red. and. Not only is it just opening up a third bloom, but this moss is getting a little bit dry. It's still a little spongy to the touch. Live moss on mounts is one of those things where you don't want to let it get too dry, but you don't want to keep it too moist either or it will affect the orchid negatively. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and how I care for these kind of mounts as well as some of the other things in here like the macroclinium which is bare rooted, some of these bulbophyllums in here which are also bare rooted, and some of these lepanthes which do have moss, some of them zombie moss, some of them live moss, and we're going to talk about how I water them and take care of them. So I'm going to go ahead and get to it and get set up on my workstation, pull some of these guys out, and I will show you how I water and feed them. So I've got a few plants here pulled out, but before I start watering, I figured I'd show you my dirty little workstation. This is how I store prepared water for my orchids and this is pretty much the stuff I use to administer it. I have gallon jugs here mixed up with my filtered water with various levels of nutrients added to them and various supplements added to them separately. I never ever mix stuff unless I'm doing it right at the moment which I'm going to feed and water. So back in the back I've got MSU at three different strengths. I've got a high strength, a medium strength, and a low strength. I've got a jug of clean fresh water right here, I've got CalMag right here, Kelp Max right here, and Calcium Nitrate right here. I don't always feed them mixed together all at the same time, I don't always feed them all at the same time or at all to be honest. The three in the front I do sporadically off and on, sometimes I mix it in with their feed, sometimes they get just these, sometimes I'll mix them together and feed. But the one thing I can say that I do consistently with my orchids in both my orchidarium and my tent is I flush with clean water very regularly. I feed, I supplement, I flush. I feed, I flush, I supplement, I feed, I flush. No matter what, every week or two, all my plants get flushed with clean water. That way they're always getting fresh, new nutrients coming to them, and I reduce the risk of salts and other mineral buildups when I'm watering these plants, especially the ones that are low feeders and that live in sensitive situations or environments like the cloud forest tank. So having that said, I'm going to set my camera up here on my tripod and I'm going to show you just how I water these, starting with some of the bigger mounts and then we'll get in a little bit closer and look at some of the other orchids as I water them and I can show you exactly how I take care of them. So my first few plants here are grown on mounts, all of them are, and this one has a little bit of live moss added on top of a little bit of zombie moss. This is my Mazdevalia Winlandiana, and this is just very barely gently moist right now. I do not want to saturate this mount. I do not saturate these every time I water them. Sometimes it's just enough to keep the live moss going. So where you see the moss is a bit faded, not quite the brilliant green it is when it's moist, we're just going to take some clean water here and we're just going to give a little bit of help to the moss. Because the rest of this moss is gently moist still, we do not want to smother the roots or make them too soggy because you will suffer. Your plant will rot and it will die. So that's it for this one. 
and a lot of the plants that are going to have live moss are going to get pretty much the exact same treatment. This next plant here is my Bulbophyllum speciosum. This Bulbophyllum loves to live moist. It has zombie moss on it. It is a bit spongy, a bit dry, but not completely dry. This plant never ever wants to dry out and I let it get pretty dry because I do not want the roots to spoil. It's time for a moss update on this thing. I'm going to get that on film here soon and share it with you guys. But for now, what we do every time we water this plant is we give it a really good soaking. Last time I watered this orchid, it was with cow mag. And this time, it's just going to get a nice soaking with some MSU fertilizer mixed up at about 63 parts per million and a little bit of calcium nitrate added to it, about 20 parts per million. Because this is a larger amount, I just soak it. And this plant really doesn't mind. It loves to stay moist. So, soak it. I'm going to put it on my drying rack and let it drip. And we'll be back for another one. Next up, we have the Masdevillia Exquisita. Again, the moss is gently dry. It's just barely moist which is fine, but I do have some aerial roots that are starting to grow up the bark here, and I don't want to lose those. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my clean water again, and we're just gonna give a nice gentle misting to this plant. Not soaking it, it's not dripping wet, but what we've done is we've made sure the bark has some nice moisture on it, so those root tips can stay happy and keep growing. They will grow aerial if you give them enough humidity. Nastavellios, Draculas, everything. So this plant's ready to go back in the Orchidarium. So the next batch of plants we're going to look at are all grown on live moss with a little bit of zombie moss underneath to keep it moist. This is a Mastavellia Garcia. This is Mastavellia Patriciana. This is Dendrobium Cuthbertsonii Red. And this is Dendrobium Gaetan Minette. I think I got that right. How about that? <laughs> Anyhow, so picking some spent blooms off. This is a great time to maintenance your plants. I have a bunch of old flower spikes here that can come off. I'm trying to be better about not being so lazy with this. So makes your plants look tatty and I don't want that. So after we're done with all that, again, these plants are still gently moist. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some clean water and we're just going to give it a light misting. Just enough to help the moss out because the plants have enough moisture already. Masdevillias are both done. Now the Cuthbert Sonii hybrids are a little bit drier and I let them get that way for a reason. This is actually borderline dry. It's still spongy but they do not like to stay completely moist for too long. So again, I'm gonna give just a little bit of help to this moss. We're not gonna soak these mounts today. This is just a judgment call. Again, you'll learn to learn the moss. If you remember how this looked before, Try to zoom back in now. You'll see the moss is greened up a bit. All it takes is a little bit of water and you'll see it goes right back to that nice lush green color. Again, my mount is not soaking, it's not dripping. And that is a very, very important thing I can tell you guys. If you're gonna grow like this with live moss, you don't wanna keep it saturated at all times. If you do, it will affect your roots and you will get issues with rot. These roots clamber all through this moss on top of it out onto the bark, wherever they really want, they will be happy. Some of them grow aerial, some of them grow straight down through the moss, but as long as you don't keep it too moist, they will stay happy long term. These two plants are ready to go back. I'll pull out some Lepanthes here and show you how I do them. So I've got a couple of my Lepanthes pulled out and these plants are going to get fed today. This is again 63 parts per million MSU fertilizer with about 20 parts per million calcium nitrate mixed in. What I like to do with these is the same. 
they're gently moist this has live moss that's found its way on this mount I did not put that there but they're all grown on zombie moss for the most part they've all got lots and lots of aerial roots attaching to the bark all around it I do like to saturate these mounts when I water them they are cloud forest miniatures that come from really moist areas usually and they like to stay moist just like Mastervalios or other Plurothalids it's a fine delicate balance in a way between too moist and not moist enough but I assure you as long as it doesn't get crispy dry and as long as it's not dripping wet all the time you find an area somewhere in between to keep them at they should stay happy with these I like to mist them down first with clean water just a little bit make sure any of the aerial roots that are on the bark get a little bit of moisture to them because we don't want to cause root burn this is also going to dilute my feed down just a little bit so instead of being overall about 80 parts per million or so I expect this to take it down somewhere in the 60s or 70s so that's all my mounts moistened I'm going to go back with another sprayer that has my feed mixed up and I'm just going to saturate it That's these four done. I'm going to take them over to the rack, let them drip off, and we'll grab some more orchids and take a look at those. So here we have the three orchids I have mounted on bare bark. This is Macroclinium dalstromii. This is Bulbophyllum odontopedalum, and this is Cirripedalum pomilio. These are the only plants that get watered every day, and when I water them every day, they get something like that. Clean water, just a quick little misting till they barely drip a bit and that's all they haven't been fed yet this week so I am going to do it a little differently today but when I feed them I don't do much different I just mist them down really good I make sure the bark is nice and moist let them drip out and that is all Again, they don't have to be watered every day. I do occasionally skip days. For instance, if it's not too warm or if they're still relatively moist from the day before, I will let them dry out fully before I water them again. They don't seem to mind. They really enjoy the high humidity and the high humidity helps keep even the bare bark moist for several hours after I water them. So, so they don't stay dry for very long and it does help them grow bare bark like this. So that's my video for today guys. I do appreciate you guys joining me. I hope you enjoyed. Everything in here is now happy and hydrated, at least for the next few days. I didn't talk a lot about duration because it's going to be completely different for me than it's going to be for you guys in most of your environments. I do grow in a really controlled space here. The tank gives me a lot of flexibility and it does hold hydration and moisture really well for me, but it might not for you depending on where you have it. I don't have mine anywhere near a window, it's not near any vents or anything like that that would accelerate humidity being sucked out of the tank or these plants. So I get by with doing this about once or twice a week in the winter time and in the summertime I do this just about every other day, excluding of course the couple plants which I've already mentioned get watered just about every day. Anyhow, that's that. Again, I hope you learned something, and I hope you enjoy. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, or want to see more about this kind of stuff, please let me know in the comments below. I do love that. Sometimes it takes me a week or so to get back to you guys, but I do answer every single comment, I promise. So, thanks so much for watching again, and as always, happy growing, and please stay safe until next time. See ya.